Up for review today is the brand new Hawker Sea Fury FB11 uh, from Airfix in 148 scale. Uh, this is brand new, this has just been delivered today. Um, I think it's only been released for a couple of days so far. So straight off box art is very nice, uh, draws you into it and um, it's absolutely stunning. I mean Airfix are getting better and better now with the uh, box art. It's a very sturdy box as well for those of you who are interested. So that's uh, enough said on the box. So have a look at the instructions first and now it's typical of the modern instructions from Airfix so it's a very well laid out and very easy to follow. So construction with the cockpit, uh, we start with that you've got a tub and a few parts going on with the control lever and the foot pedals and then the instrument panels going in and that also has uh, decals for the dials and they are um, individually done. So it's not a whole piece going on there that you're trying to fit in. We've actually got the dials, which is a very nice touch. And uh, pretty much the way I think we want to be going with um, with instrument panels, as far as decals is concerned. And then we've got the seat going onto the um, back wall there. And then there's a uh, front wall here as well, which starts to make up the cockpit tub. And we've got a nice clear area here showing you how it's meant to uh, look. So getting your angles correct. And then we're putting on the back plate as well. And that again has quite uh, positive locating, locating parts there as well. And then we've got some uh, sidewall framing going on with uh, quite a few details picked out here. And uh, with the painting instructions across that. So then over the page we're on to uh, getting the cockpit tub into the fuselage side and starting fuselage half sorry and starting to get parts in for the wing spar and the uh, tail wheel and then the two fuselage halves come together and again just making sure you've got everything aligned correctly is uh, very well laid out. Then we're going on to parts here for the wheel well and the uh, bottom of the wing. There's a piece of sprue between these two delicate parts here, so it's just telling you to remove those. And quickly we're coming on to um, deciding what options we want. So we've basically got a um, modern refurbished uh, version based at Yeovilton, or we've got a Korean War version. So uh, if there's anything on the um, underwing as far as drop tanks and that, it's, it's basically for the... It's basically for the Korean War version, uh, is the looks of it. So a few finishing touches here going together to make up the parts for the underwing and then the fuselage comes together to sit on top of that and then we're on to the front cowl with the engine detail and that looks pretty simple in construction there's two halves coming together and then we've got the ring on the end with exhaust stub sticking out and then that comes together on the to close up the fuselage and then we've got the rear horizontal stabilizers with separate ailerons and rudder and it's telling you here uh, about the degrees to angle the mat if you want to get that correct. <coughs> then we've got a nice option here uh, whether we want the wings folded out or folded. So that's a, that's a great addition. We can have folded wings straight out of the box here. And this uh, runs through the sequence if you're deciding to have the wings out. And um, a few options here again as far as rockets or bombs or for the A version. Then over the page we've got the sections here showing you if you want to do it as the folded wing running down. And then we've got an in-flight option as well, as well as wheels down. So there's uh, covers here for the tail wheel that would be going on as well as the uh, main undercarriage. And then if you're going to have wheels down we start building the undercarriage. So pretty straightforward. It looks like quite um, strong locating points here to make sure the undercarriage is uh, set at the right angle. And then we're just finishing off parts for the undercarriage here with the arms and the undercarriage doors. And then it's on to the tyres which look very uh, ver very good with um, quite a lot of detail there by the looks of it. And we've got the two halves coming together with the hub inside. So we're still going to have a seam running around the edge so we'll have to see what that looks like. But um, it's, a, it's a new touch so uh, we'll see what um, that looks like once it's together. And then these red parts are just denoting the angles and getting everything up, uh, set correctly to make sure the undercarriage is how you want it and how it's meant to be. Then we're on to um, bomb loadout and uh, drop tanks. Uh, sorry, skipping a part there, we've got the propeller here which is a one piece propeller. Um, 
The blades are all one piece molded together and then the nose comes onto the back plate and it joins onto the fuselage. And then we've got the, the loadout here. So you've got drop tanks, bombs, and as far as I can see, I think that might be a camera. I'm not, uh, not an expert on these aircraft uh, by, by any means. So that's all nice options, again, just for the A version. And then there's a, a loadout here as well, which is for rockets and bombs. And then we've got a few small details going on to finish the model as well as the tail hook. And then we're on to the clear parts, which is the canopy can be, can be shown closed or open. And a nice little part of the front windscreen here, it looks like it's got actually parts of the fuselage attached to it, so that should make getting a nice join and working out the seam uh, make it a lot easier if you need to do any filling around there. Then on to the marking options, so we've got two options, starting with uh, the A option, which is number 801 for the Naval Air Squadron HMS Glory Korean War 1952, and the standard uh, fleet air arm scheme there with uh, sky underneath and dark, extra dark sea grey on top with a nice high sided pattern there and um, it gives you the colours for the different bomb loadouts and the drop pods and, and all the rest of it and colours here are in uh, humbrel as usual and then we've got a a little piece of information here uh, explaining that photographic reference of of this aircraft uh, with pale serial numbers under both wings so um, apparently there's research ongoing so you can either use black or white and I'm imagining in the decals you've got uh, both so you can take your pick there then over to the other side this is the one that particularly interests me and the one I'll be building it's the B option and this is for the restored aircraft of uh, number 802 for the Naval Air Squadron um, which was based at, uh, at the Royal Naval Air Station in um, Eglinton in Northern Ireland in 1948 and this is now operated by the Naval Historic Flight uh, at the Royal Naval Air Station in Yeovilton, Somerset, you know, England which is based very right next to me and this is the 2017 um, scheme Nice scheme. I've even seen this plane fly overhead because I only live about 10 miles from Yeovilton, uh, so it's um, of particular interest. And this is uh, extra dark sea grey over the top, running right down to the bottom of the fuselage, and then sky underneath, and um, just wrapping around just underneath the uh, fuselage, as well as the nose cone. And um, here you can see the marking options, again, a little bit sparse, uh, which is uh, quite normal for aircraft of this time. So you've got nice decals here, as well as the roundels, and um, nice markings underneath there, which should stand out. And then for both options, you've got the stencil markings, uh, which are provided in full here. So looking at the decals, I must apologise, mine are folded over a little bit in my, uh, my set, so hopefully you can see these. So typical stuff from Modern Airfix, these are printed by a cartograph and I can't see any problem what, with these whatsoever. Uh, very, very well um, printed. Everything's in, in register, register and the colours look uh, very good. And you've got common stencil markings up here and the details for the cockpit, uh, which are for both vehicles, for both aircraft. And then you've got the set of decals for marking option A and the set of decals for marking option B. So that's good stuff. And now on to the kit parts. This is the one downside to Airfix. They still don't seem to have uh, uh, made a change to this and I don't think they're going to. Uh, we've got all the parts in one bag bundled together with the clear parts in a separate bag. And you will notice that the, the main problem for this, as you will see with mine, I've already had a look at these, is I've got damage on the clear parts. So we'll look at those first. So there's all the parts. I'm not sure whether these are going to show up too much, but I do have some uh, marks on the top of the canopy there. I'm pretty sure they come out with a bit of a dip in clear or something like that, um, so that's the hope. So I'll give that a try. Uh, but uh, that aside, everything is moulded very nicely here. The front windscreen is extremely well done with that nice... Um, part of the fuselage attached to it as well so it should slot in very nicely um, so apart from the marks uh, they're very good and the first sprue here is has the two fuselage halves as well as the parts for the front cowling and the wing spar and the ailerons and rudder now we've got a few things going on here which are interesting so we've got very nice recessed panel lines this almost looks um, 
almost like sort of a Hasegawa kit. The, the, the panel lines are kind of getting that to, that way now. They, they, they're still a little bit deep, I guess, but they're, they're good. I, I, I like it like this, to be honest. I guess they could be a little bit finer. Um, and we've got very nice raised rivet detail um, on these parts here for the tail, for the horizontal stabilizers and the rudder. So that's something interesting, and I guess that's... Uh, a bit of a key feature to this kit. Again, I don't know at uh, this plane. I don't know a lot about this plane, so let's just <laughs> uh, get that out there. Now, the f everything is moulded very well, and um, it looks really nice. Uh, there's no in uh, interior detail here on the fuselage house, but I'm guessing you don't really need it. No prominent um, ejector pin marks that are going to cause a problem. They're all sunken anyway, so that should be fine. And um, everything looks really good on that sprue. Then on to the next main sprue. And this is parts for the wings mainly. So you've got this main section here, which the uh, parts of the wing are going to join. So this this gives you the idea if you're going to do the folded wing or not. This is for that with uh, the same parts. So the, you haven't got two separate wings. Uh, then we've got the two halves there for, that make up the cowl and parts of the bombs. And parts for the bombs are, are beginning to show here. Everything again looks really, really well done here. Very well detailed. Um, again, I suppose this does highlight it. The panel lines are probably a little bit heavy. Uh, not something that I worry about. I quite like it actually. It, it makes them show up, but uh, some people may uh, complain at that. So that's just a few little things that uh, Airfix are known for doing. But apart from that, everything's really crisp, so it's, it's very well moulded. No problems on that side. Then we've got another sprue here, which pretty much caters for uh, the drop tanks here and the different uh, components for that. Then we've got the tyres here as well as, as a very nice tread pattern. Now you can see that the hub detail, if I zoom in a little bit, you can see here that the hub detail is already there and then this part comes on to make up the half. So a little bit um, of a strange way to do it I guess and we're going to lose a bit of this raised um, tread pattern when you stand the seam, but uh, it should look okay, I'm sure. And then we've got weighted wheels as well, as part of that. We've got raised uh, surface detail here on the instrument panel, which is very very well done. And uh, the dials should sink down on that when if you use setting solution, if you're gonna use the decals. Uh, nice interior detail here on the undercarriage doors and in the bay. There is a few, um, ejector pin marks in there which are sunken so maybe a bit of an issue uh, to sort out and then we've got the cockpit tub here as well which again is nice raised detail on the side panels and then we've got a few other parts that make up the wing so the uh, ailerons here and a few other bits but again overall uh, extremely uh, well done and quite nice sprue gates here from Airfix. Usually they're absolutely massive, but um, they, they do seem to have made an effort to try and get those down, so the parts should come away a lot easier as well. Then we've got this part, which uh, the standout feature here is the one-piece propeller, which pretty much gets away, gets rid of any uh, major problems in getting the propellers lined up. So the blades there are all in one piece, and then they are fixed to and sandwiched in between the back plate and the nose cone. And Again, you can see quite a lot of uh, parts for the bombs here and the different and the different types of bombs. And we've also got the wing fold uh, parts here as well that go in 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 the part where the wing is folded to give you detail in there as well. A few fine finer parts moulded and um, a very nice hook there as well, which um, I'm not sure this is going to show up too well, but. And this sprue caters for a few of the, the small parts left over with a few of the rockets and um, parts for the cockpit. So you've got the seat here, which has uh, very good surface detail there on the back, uh, which would be fabric, I guess. There are no seat belts in this one. They have started to add seat belts in some, um, but this one doesn't have it, so that might be a slight problem. Um, then the tail wheel here is, is nicely detailed, and the back plate looks pretty good as well. So again, I'd say it's a high level of detail right across the kit, from what I can see. Um, if you really want to go to town to it, to it, then you probably need to add a few more extra bits. Um, the side parts here as well, which make up the framing for the side of the cockpit tub, there is wiring added to those, and um, 
It does look very well detailed. I'm sure that uh, if you did this kit straight out of the box, apart from the need for belts, I can't see that anything else should need to be um, added. And you might be able to see here as well, it's, it's one of the modern features now with the Airfix kit. The sprue is just laid out a lot nicer and they do seem to be trying to get rid of ejector pin marks. Now, there are some on the other sprues, but these newer types, they seem to be pulling it all out like this. As you might be able to see, there's quite a lot of uh, push out marks there. Um, and that means that there's there's not actually any problems on the on the parts here from what I can see. I, I can't see even on this back plate. Uh, there's no ejector pin marks. And again, very, very uh, small sprue gates. So these are all very welcome additions from Airfix. They seem to be improving with each kit. So that's the inbox review of the Hawker Sea Fury, brand new from Airfix, the FB11. Uh, now, um, I'm very impressed with this kit. I think it's it's a really nice uh, example of this plane, and um, as far as I can see, there's only uh, the older Hobbycraft version of this out that's any any sense. So um, it's a very welcome addition in 148 scale. Now I will be building this very shortly, so um, I will do a full video build on this. I'm building it for a friend, and I will be doing the uh, local version, uh, which is the Overton aircraft. So. Uh, if you want to stay tuned to that, subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss any updates and stay tuned for the full build.